One of the things that always kept Jesus at odds with the religious leaders of his day was his tendency to always put human needs above religious practice. It is my sincere belief that the fastest growing ministries in the country will be those that are centered around meeting the needs of people. He won't be centered around uh, awesome singers or great orators or fancy pews or elaborate buildings. But I believe that those ministries that will enjoy the visitation of the Holy Spirit and that will see the latter day move of God and experience the outpouring of his spirit and going forth in signs and miracles and wonders will be ministries that are built around meeting the needs of people. Because after all, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to bring rest and relief to people, to relieve human suffering. In fact, he came all the way from heaven and took on human form so that he could relate to what it would be like to be you. That he left his throne in heaven, laid aside his glory, took on a human form so that he could understand what it's like to be you. We, we studied this in Bible class on Wednesday, how Jesus Christ is our great high priest. And we don't have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. That when we talk to God about what we're going through, our issues, our challenges, our temptations, and our struggles, he says, I understand it. And because I can relate to you, I can pray for you more fervently because I know what it's like to be you. What's my point I'm making? The point I'm making is people matter. Ah, it's interesting, it's interesting that most of the battles that Jesus uh, had in the Bible, almost all of them, with the religious leaders of his day, always came as a result of criticism for Jesus either, either healing somebody or delivering somebody or setting somebody free. That all the times that they got into fierce debates about him, about his, uh, his, his, his leadership and his, and his claims to be the son of God, all those things always centered around Jesus healing somebody. Every time he healed somebody or opened somebody's eyes or, or blessed somebody, there was always somebody in the corner criticizing him. And it always centered around the idea of him helping somebody. Because Jesus understood that people mattered. People mattered to him. To him, it was always about setting us free for delivering us. But, but the religious leaders of his day, um, they were more concerned with practice, policy, rules, regulation. They were concerned with being more politically correct. Sounds like a lot of people today, doesn't it? Who tend to put, listen to this, put practice before people. They put policy before principle. They put rules above roles, and they tend to do what is convenient versus what is right. That in the eyes of people, our rules, our regulations, our traditions are more important than the people that we came to serve. That they would much rather see you suffer than to violate their traditions, their rules, their practices, because they don't understand that to God, people matter. Jesus was going to use this particular man's situation as an illustrated sermon. Because my belief is that many people are spiritually and mentally where this man is physically. He is withered in his right hand. And Jesus was going to use him as an example to show what he was doing with this man physically is what many of us are experiencing mentally, where we are crippled in our thinking, crippled in our mindsets. Anything that allows you to put principles, practice, and rules above the needs of people is a sign that there is something debilitating in your mentality. 
And I believe that many people are not being delivered today simply because the church has become crippled in our ideology as to why we exist in the first place. We don't exist to be another church on the corner. We don't exist to have some place to go on a Sunday morning. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the churches, the ministry that exists in this church exists for the purpose of ministering to people. We're not here just to entertain each other. And I submit to you that anything that we do in our church that does not have the goal of meeting the needs of people, you will soon find those things being dismissed. Because Jesus didn't die so that we could have church. He died so that you might have life and have that life more abundantly. And what people need when they come into our churches is not more rules, not more regulations, but they need somebody preaching life. Oh, I'm preaching good, but you ain't shouting good. They need somebody to throw their arms around them and say, I'm glad to see you, versus somebody say, you can't sit there. Oh, it's gonna be a stretch for somebody. Say, it's gonna be a stretch. For somebody who's been steeped in religion or been steeped in a certain psyche or steeped in a certain teaching where you can't get over your prejudices, your ideology, your upbringing so that you can put the needs of individuals above what you've been taught. You are crippled in your mentality and weak in your theology and going to be a failure in your life because we have been called to minister to the needs of people. Look at somebody say people matter. When I'm challenging you to stretch your mentality today, I'm telling you that stretching sometimes, I'm talking about you have to lengthen your mind. When you stretch something, you have to lengthen it. You have to broaden it. You have to expand something without tearing something. You have to stretch it. It's not going to be comfortable. I couldn't warn somebody in here. What God is calling from you is not going to be comfortable. Because there are people who will not agree with the idea that you would put the needs of people first. And I challenge everybody in this church, I don't care where you serve, whether you're playing on an instrument or typing a memo, that if what you do does not have the goal of meeting the needs of people, I challenge you to rethink what you're doing. If all we came here to do is to build our brand and to build our name and to be famous or to be important, you have already missed the whole purpose of the mission of Jesus Christ for coming to the earth. How many folks want to be on the Lord's side and be with what God is doing? Unfortunately, many of us have have bought into the idea that church is designed to serve me. But in reality, we are called to serve the church. That we're not here so we can build our name or build our brand or line our pockets or get gold water fountains or to get a new car. You could have had all that without Jesus. But we are here to serve the needs of people. If you hear what God is saying, give God a praise in here. He has an ear. Let him. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. You might have to come get me, Deacon. Sit down. I got some more to tell you.